Hey all, and I'm back with another KiCad tutorial. I know I've been off for a long time, not making any videos, but I had a very good reason. I just became a dad to a little girl, so I just needed some time to look after her and see her grow for a week or two. Uh, but yeah, I'm back, as always, going to make some more tutorials on KiCad and Altium. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to take a complicated footprint or, or component and break it down into different sections in the schematic. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to break up your footprint that you create into different sections. What do I mean? What I mean by that is, uh, for, say, for example, you got a 200 pin package and you don't want to make one component for that package. You want to make a section for ground, a section for VCC, a section for GPIO, but it's still one component, but you can break it off in different parts. Um, let's look at an example for the Raspberry Pi computer module that I'm busy making on live stream with you guys. So we are busy making a PCB for this Raspberry Pi module on our live streams currently. And you can see it's quite a complicated board with many, many pins, about 200. So what I mean, when I create a footprint for this, I want to make it in such a way that my grounds are together, my Ethernet might be together, my GPO might be together. So you can imagine it's not going to be 200 pins, one component. You'll see once we start, I'll have five different components, but it's still one component. Let's start and then you'll see what I mean. So the first thing we do, as you guys know, by creating components, we go to symbol editor top left here. I already created a Plumpot library and I just keep adding to that. So I right click, add new symbol. Now you'll see I'm going to call this the Raspberry Pi uh, module or computer module and then you'll see number of units per package so this is where it changes so i'm going to have one package into i'm going to let's start with four different parts so i'll have a ground part a power part a ethernet part and a gpio part uh, you can increase and decrease this as your component needs i might probably need more for this 200 pin component and then I say, OK, uh, so let's make it four and we say, OK, on the top left, you'll see we can actually choose between them. So this, guys, remember, is one component. So I'll have part A here, unit A, unit B, unit C, unit D. Just remember, this is one component, not four different components. So let's get started. I'm going to make a mark ground, create a symbol, we place our pin. So I know you guys know how to create components. So I'm not going to get too much detail. If you guys have missed my video of how to create components, just go look at the KiCad playlist. I'll put a link below how to make your own footprint, how to make your own component. Um, but for now, let's just look at what pins I'm going to use. So when I look at my Raspberry Pi computer module in the data sheet, you can see it tells me pin one, pin two, and what it is. So I'm going to con connect all the ground pins, one, two, seven, eight, 13, 14, and make it into one component, but still part of a bigger component. So let's do that. So now I made my ground um, component of my component, my ground section, and you can see I just made a nice symbol here, one to 14, and it's ground. So one, two, seven, eight, 13, 14 is all ground. Now let's do the ethernet pairs. For that, all I do is I go to unit B and now you can see it, but you can just delete this. Now, when we go to unit B, C and D, you might see some stuff there, but you can just delete the pins again. So for B, I deleted it and now I'm going to make this my Ethernet. So yeah, I just made my Ethernet 3 and 1, my differential pairs B and N, and I did that according to our data sheet. So you can see uh, pin 3 is number 3, pin 4. I know there's more. But I just want to show you guys the principle of how to do this footprint and then you guys can extend it as much as you want. Now let's do the GPIO one. We go to unit C. You might see we have some stuff here. We can just delete it and start over, make it nice. And then we double click full body with color. There we go. And you can see my other ones are still fine. Now let's do the GPIO. Now I just made a small GPIO block. There is way more GPIOs at the Raspberry Pi. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So here you can see I just took the data sheet again. GPIO 26 is pin 24. As you can see, 24, 
GPO 2027, 20, 1328, and 1629. So far, I've done unit A, which is my ground, unit B, which is my Ethernet, unit C, which is my GPO, and then I'll do unit D to be my voltage. Remember guys, this is all one component. It's just easier to punch them up. So when you make your schematic, it's easier to read, it's easy to understand, and it can get complicated with 200 pins, and there's just an easier way to make it less of a struggle for you. So let's do our voltage. And now I made my voltage part or my voltage unit as well. So unit A is my ground, unit B is my ethernet, unit C is my GPOs, and then unit D is my voltage. And so we can save it. Guys, just a couple of things. When you uh, double click on this, or when you create a part, and you create a body for your component, just make sure you don't select this, common to all units and components. This will make the shape of this, the shape of your body, the same for every single one. And you can see sometimes you need a bigger or smaller. So that's very important. Another important thing is all units are not interchangeable. Um, otherwise, it just makes it a copy of each other. And you'll see B, C, D. So make sure this is clicked. So it's not the same, right? So it's not, you can't use A with B. It's totally different. It's not interchangeable. So those two important boxes that you either need ticked or not ticked. So let's see how this looks on a schematic. Save it. So we open a new schematic and now we can place components by using this button at the top right here. And then I'll just search for my Plumpod library. And you can see I've got three different ones and there's my Raspberry Pi module. So if I push OK, you'll see it connects the A part. And then I can just place again and you can see you can B, C, E. So I am going to place my B and then I'm going to place my C and then my D. So this is actually quite nice. So now imagine you had one big component here of 200 pins. Now you've got your sections all split up, even though it's one component. So yeah, I can connect all my grounds, just, just wire it down to ground, and then we can do something like this, etc. So you can see A, B, C, D. So you still have to tools, annotate schematic, annotate, and you'll see it all stays U1, U1, U1. It means it's one component. So this is really great um, when you start doing complex designs, where you've got 100 GPO pins, it just makes it easier for you to understand where everything is. So if I want to build my circuits for EtherCut, uh, EtherCut, Ethernet, then I just have to focus here. I don't have all the grounds and powers and VCC in between it to make it look neat. Yeah, I can just focus on my GPOs. Yeah, I can just have my decoupling capacitors to my ground. So this is really, really a cool uh, way of doing it when you have a big component with a lot of IO pins or a lot of connectors. Um, so we are doing this on Sundays with a live stream, building on Raspberry Pi dev board, should I say. Guys, I hope this was valuable. So that's it, guys. We just went through how we can take a component and break it into different components. Uh, like I said, it's perfect for when you do more complex designs where you just need to keep a, head a, bit, keep a nice head on yourself to make sure you don't make any mistakes. It helps prevent more mistakes. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe. As I said, I'm back making videos, helping you guys. Just took a little time off, but I'm still here. Uh, chat again later. Please join our Discord if you want any help or any questions. Until the next video, bye.